Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at theserverside.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Get Outlook Mail Message filter that we've got in UiPath Studio. Did a previous tutorial on just getting the Outlook Mail messages, but it seems that a lot of people are having trouble with this filter, and I would say probably people are trying to get it to do a little too much. So I'm going to show you a basic example of how to use that Get Outlook Mail Message filter. And then also there's an upcoming video on how to do more advanced filtering programmatically. So I'm going to kick this example off by creating a new process and I'm going to call it get outlook emails by filter. And maybe I should be respectful of outlook there and make that a capital letter and spell the name of outlook properly. Okay, so that's the, the name of the project that I'm creating. And what I want to do is I want to be able to go through my emails here and filter them a little bit, just using the get outlook activity. As you can see, I've got one email here that's marked high importance. You see the red flag. I've got one from Callie Jones, one from my mom, Barbara McKenzie. I've got one asking, could I borrow some money? So I'd like to filter on importance. I'd like to filter on the username and maybe filter on the subject line as well to see how all of that might work. And so how do we do that? Well, the I guess we got to go back into UiPath. So here we are. I'm going to open the main window and we need an Outlook activity here. So I'm going to go into app integration. I'm going to integrate with Outlook and I'm going to do that by using the get Outlook mail messages activity. Now this Outlook mail messages activity, this is going to go in and read my email. It's only going to read unread messages unless I deselect that checkbox. So if you've got a 10,000 messages, don't deselect that. But as you can see, I've only got seven messages in here. So I'm going to deselect that. The other thing I'm going to add in here is I'm going to add a filter. And what I want to do initially is I only want to see the emails that have a high priority. And so I'm going to say importance equals single quote high and single quote and all of that inside double quotes. And that should give me just one email because only this really important email is marked with high importance. So that's the filtering. This is pretty basic. If you want to do advanced filtering, you really need to, to loop through and do some proper processing. So this is only designed to kind of have a, a low level filtering for your email messages. But that should work there. Importance equals high. Also here, what's the output? So I want to hold the results in a variable. So that means I need to add a new variable. I'll call it email messages. And it's going to be, well, this gets a little complicated here because the type, the email is going to be a collection, right? I'm going to get a bunch of emails back. So I need to hold all of those in a list. But I have to specify what's in that list. That T there just means it's sort of a generic type, could be anything. I need to specifically state here that it's going to be mail messages that are going to be held inside of that list. So let me see if I can find mail messages. There's the mail messages, no female messages, just mail messages. Seems like it's a little discriminatory, but we'll deal with it. So that's the variable set up right there called email messages of type mail message. And so now on my get outlook mail messages, I need to say when this runs, all of those emails are going to be stored in this variable named email messages. Okay, so I think that looks good. We've got our filter on there. We're specifying the variable that we're going to hold the result of getting all of the Outlook messages. We're going into the inbox filter. I think all of this looks really, really handsome. So what do we do after we've got the emails? Well, I want to loop through them. And so to do a, a looping structure, I guess you could use programming or you can use flow control. And I want to use this flow control. I'm going to loop through each of these different mail messages. As we loop through the mail messages, I'm just going to call it email. You can even leave item there, but I just like saying email, seeing that it is email. What we're going to be looping through is the email messages variable that's holding all of the email messages. Now, one thing actually happens here. Yeah, I typed in the right variable, but notice that the type argument is just object. So the tool doesn't know that that list is actually holding mail message objects, so it just defaults to something very basic. And that's going to cause a problem. So the values that we're looping through are all of the elements in the email messages list, but those objects themselves are mail messages. So you need to specify that as the type argument, otherwise you'll get a late binding exception. Okay, so that all looks good. Now what's the activity I want to do? The activity I'm going to do is simply just printing out the subject. So I go down into the system, I'm going to dig into the bowels of the dialog box and throw a message box on here. 
And that message box is just going to take the email and then get the subject, turn that into a string and print it out. Now, as I said, I've got six or seven different emails here, but only one is marked as being really important. So, and I've got that in the filter of the email message, importance equals high. So let's see what happens when I run this application. I'm gonna do a save, I'm gonna do a run. And when it runs, I see a message box saying, this is really important, I click okay. And it ends because there's no others there. If I end up saying that the importance is normal, click save, control S, save, and then run this again, you notice that I don't get the one about the importance, but I get all of the others. And there's a couple of different ones you can do. As I said, I've actually got an email from my mom in there. So her name is Barbara McKenzie. And I can do a from on the, on the, on the UI field that I'm filtering on. So I can go in here and say, instead of importance equals normal, I could say from equals single quote. Don't do colon there. It's got to be equals. In single quotes, the name of my mom, Barbara McKenzie and I can click save and then I can run this and here you can see I should get hey my computer needs fixing which is the title of the article I got from Barbara McKenzie the email I got and what else could we do well you can even do the the subject line so the subject line from my mom was what was it uh, my computer needs fixing and I could specify that as one of the parameters here as well so in this case I could say hey Subject equals my computer needs fixing. Now I'm just printing out the subject, so this is gonna be a pretty boring when it runs, but you get the idea. Click save, click run. My computer needs fixing, and so that comes out right there. So that seemed to have filtered that effectively. Now, as I said, you can, uh, you, you, I, I, getting into like wildcard and like queries and stuff like that inside of this box might become a little problematic. You may have to go into some sort of like SQL syntax and stuff like that. So I think the idea here is really to do some basic filtering. So hopefully you've got subjects that are consistent. Say if you've got somebody registering or you've somebody submitted an invoice, you can filter on it very, very easily like that. Um, I don't think this is supposed to be used for really in-depth filtering. Um, I will have a tutorial on in-depth filtering and inspecting the content of the body and things like that um, in one of the upcoming tutorials. But for this, I think you're supposed to just keep it simple. And you can see that if you do keep it simple, everything works really well. And there you go, that's how you use that filter. As I said, it's fairly basic. Don't try and do things too complicated with it. You might have to go into some programming if you got some really extreme requirements. Anyways, if you enjoyed this tutorial, head over to theserverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on enterprise software development. If you're interested in my personal antics, follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And I'd also say subscribe on YouTube.